Hello and welcome back. We are at the NAEA Studio and Gallery here in Alexandria, Virginia. We're here for the Blick Summer Series of Workshops. Our next workshop, Welcome to My Hive. You know we can learn an awful lot from honeybees. In a honeybee community, you guys are going to find uh, more collaboration, more cooperation than you would find anywhere on earth. Every single bee has a job to to do, has a role to play within the community to assure its survival. And we can make that parallel, of course, between the bee world and the human world. And we are mostly in our city supported by worker bees. For our lesson plan today, we're actually going to look at uh, the roles of those around us, the worker bees around us. So we're going to take the focus off of ourselves here for a little bit and start to think about those in our community who do the things that keep our community humming along. We're going to design cells. And there's a couple reasons why we might want to use symbols instead of like a person's name or try to draw a picture of that person. We're looking at uh, the silverware there. That could, that could be a representation of a cafeteria worker. If you're using symbols, it's going to be uh, clearer. There's these, ten, these things, you know, if we've got all these individual cell, cells going and uh, they're all data intensive, I should say, you know, uh, it will be easier to look at as a whole if there's just a little bit of information in each cell. Now you notice that some of these are tall, some of them are short. We've got a wide variety of sizes. I'm going to make a couple of different widths here. Cut it out as straight as I can. We're going to fold it in half and then make a crease. Next, we're going to fold in two the crease and fold it again. Repeat this on the other side. Now you can fold this into a hexagon shape and you will have one panel that will overlap and one panel that can be cut off. So we'll glue those two panels together, secure it with a paper clip, and then you'll have one panel that will just cut off. There's our hexagon shape. Set that aside to dry, create some more hexagon shapes. A small amount of glue on the edge. And then I'll just set it down here on the paper. And while that glue dries, move on to the next one. Once we have a number of these hexagon cells made up with the paper, uh, then we can draw our symbols inside of them and assemble them together into a honeycomb hive, like this. Remember, negative space. They don't all need to uh, be next to each other. And the negative space makes it a lot more interesting. I think the hardest part would be when, when you're gluing it down, the shapes can get so wonky. And so if you made them trace the template at first, then they would have something to glue down to. Yes. Now that would be for older kids. I don't, I'm not so sure what that would look trace. But that would be the best way. Because I was even have I even having trouble getting them really even. So um, so that would be the one thing. There's a, you know, you can buy the, craft, the little craft boxes and hexagon shapes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a That's picture on one of that sheets, the sheets there where you stamp, you know, put, make that into a stamp and you stamp the hexagon oh, shapes yeah. together. Then you're losing the 3D part of it, but it sure, certainly would be well, easier for you to right wrap it. Top it. Or
And any thoughts on perhaps turning this into more of a, a collage type or assemblage type uh, piece? Sure. I'm thinking uh, for the, the your your project, the first year, first the project that then as a school start, starts, mm -hmm. and then each grade level make a different size. It's so for younger mm -hmm. grade level, it's a bigger size, bigger extent, and um, fourth grade size. Um, the my highest the support graders maybe this size would be right. appropriate. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they could make handle. more. Yeah. Right. They yeah. could make more cells whereas yeah. the little ones yeah. maybe only make one.